Welcome to Corkin today for December 16th, 2019. This is the show where I break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of Corkin right now and give you my opinion on them. Now, this is my opinion. If you want to learn more about these stories, check out the show notes down below. I'll put a link to each story there so you can read about them for yourself and let us know what you think. We'll really love to hear from you. If you're new here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. It really does help us because it lets YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. Hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of cable TV just to watch the shows you enjoy. Well, real quick before we get into the news of the day, there's a couple great deals happening right now. You can get a Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K or Fire TV Cube on sale, starting off at um, $34.99 for the Fire TV Stick 4K, a great 4K HDR streaming player. But if you qualify, you may be able to get it for $24.99 with a special promo code. Not really exactly sure who qualifies, who doesn't. Amazon's never really fully explained that. Link in the show notes down below if you're interested in learning more about those deals or maybe trying to get a Fire TV stick for $24.99. Also, Roku's uh, are on sale with the Roku Ultra, the 2019 model. So the brand new Roku Ultra with the faster specs, the new remote, with programmable buttons and more, it's on sale for $69.99. A really good deal there um, for the Roku Ultra. So check that out, link in the show notes down below for both of those deals. All right, jumping into the news of the day, Comcast is um, cracking down on customers looking for discounts. So we've talked to some um, Comcast employees who work in their customer um, service areas, we'll call them. And according to them, there's a new initiative rolling out in 2020 called Comcast Vision 2020. Comcast Vision 2020 is kind of the roadmap for 2020. Now, the big thing here for the end consumers is a couple important notes. First of all, um, Comcast is limiting the ability for phone agents and store reps to give discounts. Now, I know they've done this in the past, but this is a pretty significant crackdown on it. Comcast is going to the model, you know, this is their our price, this is what you're paying once your promotional rate is over. They're also going to be rearranging um, some of their packages in 2020 and dropping channels. Now, we've seen this in the past. We're seeing some travel channels or game show networks going to be dropped from the, some of these packages that are going to be the same money, but with less content in them. Because when you do that, you don't have to pay as much. You're basically getting a price hike without actually physically having to add change the advertised price. You just slightly no lower the number of channels that are available. According to the Comcast employees we've talked to, if you want to get a discount on Comcast uh, TV, you'll be required to sign up for either like a wireless phone plan or a home security plan to continue getting discounts. Otherwise, you're going to be paying full price according to the Comcast agents that we've talked to. So, I'd love to know what you think. Uh, what do you think of Comcast's vision here? You think that's going to impact the growth of core cutting at all? Or does this change any thoughts? Were you Are you still a Comcast customer thinking about becoming a core cutter? Leave me a comment, let me know. Speaking of price hikes, so we learned over the last couple of weeks that you know Spectrum back in October, Comcast this week, AT&T next month are all raising their prices. Now we can confirm that Dish is also raising the prices and they're launching a regional um, sports fee. So this is a the sports fee you see on cable and other places. Dish is now rolling this out to um, their plans. So most plans are going to be going up about five bucks a month with one to three dollars for broadcast uh, of regional sports. So if you're uh, a Dish customer, get ready. You're about to pay more. Um, and right now, that means Comcast, AT&T, Spectrum, and Dish are all raising their prices, all within a few months of each other. So for whatever talk about Netflix's $2 price hike or whatever, you know, as I always remember, you know, Com Comcast, all these others are raising the price. I always get the comment, well, Luke, wouldn't core cutting just someday be more expensive than cable? The only way that would really happen right now is if cable TV stops raising its price. With some of these providers raising their price 10 or more dollars a month, you can see why that's not going to happen anytime soon. And Spectrum, when they raised their price in October, that was the third price hike in 12 months. And now we're seeing Comcast, like we just talked about in the previous story, say, hey, guess what? We're going to not really give discounts. And I know in the past we've done things where we would just cut down on the price of, or we would uh, cut down on your price if you called and complained, but we're making that very hard to do. 
So leave me a comment, let me know, are you a Dish customer? Does this um, change your mind? Maybe even push you even farther into core cutting? Leave me a comment, let me know. All right, AT&T's U-verse may stop selling in 2020. I've heard this rumor for a while now. I reached out to AT&T for comment because AT&T had previously confirmed to Core Cars News that in markets where AT&T TV, their new streaming service with a contract and all that kind of stuff, basically cable streamed online, is uh, going to be nationwide in 2020. And AT&T had confirmed that when it goes live in a market, they stop selling AT&T U-verse. Now, AT&T um, did say that UVerse TV current customers will not be impacted, but they did decline to reply to our, re our question about, uh, do you intend to, when the nationwide rollout happens in 2020 in February, stop selling AT&T UVerse? Um, this kind of lines up with some early reports. Yahoo first reported back in 2017 that AT&T wanted to do away with UVerse and move people at the time to DirecTV. Now I would assume they want to move them also to AT&T TV. But it does kind of point the finger at the fact that the future of TV is kind of um, moving away from some of these systems. I'm sure AT&T would love to get rid of UVerse because it takes up some of the bandwidth they could be using for internet out there. So it would be interesting to keep a close eye on this. Now AT&T was very clear. Current customers are not impacted by this. Um, so, just like in current markets, like in Springfield, Missouri, where they stopped selling UVerse, if you're currently already paying for it, you can continue to pay for it. You just can't go add it to a new package, unfortunately. So, let me know. Uh, we'll be watching this very closely, but we may have our first major death of a TV service in 2020, at least when it looks at people being able to sign up for it. All right, so one of the things that's really fighting in the world of cable and television streaming something called churn this is the idea that people are constantly canceling services and jumping back and forth between all these options now a study um, that was posted in bloomberg has come out and said that 10 percent of streaming subscribers to like netflix youtube tv disney plus and more cancel every single month now fortunately for these services they're adding more subscribers than are canceling but it's this issue, right? I sign, sign up for Apple TV Plus or Netflix or Hulu. I binge watch a bunch of stuff and then it's cancel and switch. It's actually something I've recommended core cars do. You watch what you want to watch and then you cancel. You don't have to subscribe to these services year round. If you just want Game of Thrones, just pay for HBO during Game of Thrones, I would often tell people in the past. Well, this gives us a number of how many people are doing it. And what's interesting is, you know, there's a growing effort within the world of streaming and TV in general of how do we stop people from doing this exact thing of jumping around between services. We're seeing things like Apple TV Plus and Disney Plus and others go into weekly release schedules. Like, hey, you can't binge watch, you know, the new season of Handmaid's Tale on Hulu all at once because it's a weekly show. Unless you're willing to wait to the end and watch them, you're out of luck. Um, Netflix has kind of gone a different route. They've said, hey, we can create so much good, high quality original programming that people will stay subscribed because there's always something new. You know, you got the Lost in Space, you got the um, Stranger Things, uh, Last Chance You, and more. They just got all this content, which will make you want to stay subscribed, even if you've already watched the show you first want to watch, because next month, something else you want to watch is coming. So I'd love to hear from you. What is your thought on uh, this me method? Do you think weekly releases are more likely to keep you subscribed? Do you think just producing a ton of high quality content is the best way to keep people subscribed? Leave me a comment, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. All right, PlayStation View is shutting down in a little over a month and we've kind of got an idea of what would have been if they hadn't shut down. Now, some of this we knew before, but I thought it was very interesting talking um, to some of my sources over the last couple of months and more, what would have come to PlayStation View if they hadn't shut down? What I've heard and what was officially announced by the head of PlayStation View a couple years ago is two main things would have happened. 4K uh, would have been rolled out to PlayStation View. Currently, Fubo is the only live TV streaming service with 4K built into the app. Yeah, you can use like your PlayStation View login with the Fox Sports app to access it there, uh, but that's it. Um, and Sony was still looking at international expansion. According to reports, 4K was put on hold earlier this year 
when it was when it became clear that they were putting PlayStation View up for sale, and later when no buyers appeared, selling it. The other thing that was um, put on hold a while back actually was an international expansion. So we learned in 2017 that Sony was looking at expanding PlayStation View internationally in an effort to promote the PlayStation 4 as one of the main ways to watch TV streaming online. But that was put on hold because of PlayStation View's struggles in the United States. They said, hey, let's figure out what's happening in the United States. Why aren't we growing the way we want to before we roll this out to other markets? But according to reports, that was not dead. Sony had actually even gone around and looked at possible markets, possible ideas to roll PlayStation um, View out into other markets like Europe. So we'll have to keep an eye on it. There was also other things in the pipeline, but mostly small things, improving the guide, improving the apps, working on the back end of the code and more. So leave me a comment, let me know which one of these would you be most excited about? Do you think if they had rolled out 4K, that would have helped them stay alive? Or do you think uh, improving the guide or stuff would have helped them stay alive? Would any of this mattered in the long run if they had just gone ahead and done it rather than waiting and eventually shutting down? So let me know. All right, a couple quick stories we're going to race through real quick. Um, ABC has a Charlie Brown Christmas for free streaming online through the ABC app and on the ABC website. If you want to find that, I know a lot of people love this show and no longer want to watch it uh, when the TV has it. There you go. Now, it is for free online with ads. Of course, you can buy it through a place like Amazon or iTunes and more if you don't want ads. Also, um, one last story up of the day that I wanted to really cover is Spectrum has an a la carte TV option. This is something that's been getting a lot of attention I wanted to cover, is that Spectrum has an a la carte TV option for core carters called Spectrum TV Choice. With this, you pay $24.99 plus broadcast TV fees. You get your local channels, a bunch of music channels no one cares about, and you get to pick 10 channels from a list you want. So whatever 10 channels you want, you can pick that. Works out to be you know, roughly 30 some bucks for the whole package. I'd love to know what you think of this. Now there are some catches, you have to have Spectrum internet to get this. And you, I believe they're still enforcing the rule where you can't transfer, you can't go from Spectrum cable TV to Spectrum internet and then immediately get this. You need to be a Spectrum internet only customer for a while to qualify. But just as broken it down, and this is um, in the post down below if you wanna read more about it, but this is definitely what we've talked about in the past, that this idea that a la carte TV would start with small bundles where you could say, I want this channel, this channel, this channel, but not that one and not that one, for example. And then you could build your own package for a flat fee. I do still think a la carte TV will eventually come. I just don't think it's going to come anytime soon. The problem with it is too many of the small networks would die. There's just not enough um, supporters out there. A couple years ago, there was even a study that said some major news networks like CNN may not make it in a truly a la carte world where they wouldn't be able to um, support themselves with the current amount of viewers that are willing to pay for them. So I'm gonna keep a close eye on this story, but I'd love to know, anybody here with Spectrum TV Choice, what do you think of it? Can you leave us a little review? Leave us a comment down below. Let us know what you think about it. If you're a Spectrum Airnet customer and you wanna learn more about maybe sign up for it, check out the story down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. Just did a really great job breaking it all down. So that's it for today. I hope you all had a fantastic weekend. And we're ready for a busy week here at Core Cars News with a lot of news, tips, tricks, and more coming your way right here on our YouTube channel. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos, and give us a thumbs up, it really does help. But also head over to corecarsnews.com and check out all the stories I post there because what I do here is just a small fraction of what happens over there. Thank you to everybody for your support. I really appreciate it. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody.